kid. You're just getting a little old to be in a boy band. I'm 19. Get a life, Marsh! Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the best South Park episodes of each season. You want me to bring you some McDonald's? Okay. What do you want for McDonald's? Chicken nuggets. For this list, we'll be looking at standout episodes from 26 seasons of this favorite mountain town show. Do you have a favorite South Park episode? Let us know in the comments. Season 1, Death. Focused squarely at Stan's grandfather's desire to prematurely end his life, it was one of the few early episodes that showed audiences this wasn't just a show about four foul-mouthed kids. Sure, it's full of laughs including Grandpa Marsh's scowling at Billy and the Grim Reaper's love of Terrence and Philip. But the heart of this episode showed audiences how difficult end-of-life decisions can be and how they affected your loved ones. This set the stage for countless stories that would follow on for years. My son? Yes? I'm not touching that with a 60-foot pole. Season 2. Spooky Fish When you think of things that might scare you during Halloween, killer goldfish are probably not at the top of your list. Through the magic of parallel dimensions and evil twins, South Park gave us not only Stan's spooky fish, but perhaps one of the show's most terrifying guests, an Eric Cartman who's nice. Sporting a goatee, this one is friendly, kind, and even thoughtful towards others. I love you guys. As for the fish, he manages to go on a bit of a rampage, taking out visitors to Stan's home. Throw it all together with the spooky vision frame on the screen, and you've got laughs to go with all your candy. Number 3. Season 3. Rainforest Schmainforest. How are we all doing today? I can't hear you. I said, how are we all doing? Fun fact. Did you know that Jennifer Aniston did the voice of Miss Stevens in this episode? Her character leads the boys down to Costa Rica to teach them more about the rainforests. From there, this episode's funniest scenes come from the interactions between Stevens and Cartman. Eric, will you please, please just keep your mouth shut while we present ourselves to the Costa Rican president? Why? Because I'll buy you some ice cream afterwards if you do. <laughs> With Eric's clear disdain for the country, the two collide repeatedly as she tries to get him to behave. The laughs keep coming as she gets the kids lost in the forest and somehow ends up in a cheerleader outfit very reminiscent of Rachel's from Friends. Season 4 – Something You Can Do With Your Finger Thanks to Cartman's efforts to form his own boy band, fans were given a tasty satirical look at the singing craze. This episode goes after every trope associated with these kinds of pop groups. Ridiculous band name? Check. Stereotypical members? Check. Songs that make no sense but drive fans crazy? Check. Yet it even gets that much better when we find out Stan's dad, Randy, was also once in a boy band. The songs were terrible, but believe it or not, the country ate them up. The next thing I knew, we were the biggest thing in the world. It's Randy's last-minute inclusion in the group that makes the whole thing even more outrageous and comical than we would have expected. Season 5 – Scott Tennerman Must Die What are those? My pubes. What? I got it from Scott Tennerman. Scott Tennerman, the ninth grader? It's interesting that the absolute best South Park episode would also be one of the simplest. There's no moral or commentary on our society. It's essentially just a cat and mouse game as Cartman tries to get back at Scott Tennerman for selling him his pubes. After watching Cartman continually fail miserably in his revenge plot, it's the twist ending that makes this episode. We won't give it away here, but let's just say it elevates the story to another level of comedic genius and Cartman to another level of psychopath. You'll never look at a bowl of chili the same way again. Mm, your tears are so yummy and sweet. Dude, I think it might be best for us to never piss Cartman off again. Season 6 – The Return of the Fellowship of the Two Towers Coming out about a month before the Two Towers hit theaters, this episode brought Middle Earth to South Park. Stone and Parker have often said that some of their favorite episodes are simply about the kids being kids. This episode takes us back to a more innocent time when playing make-believe almost felt real. For the boys, returning The Lord of the Rings to the video store evolves into a rousing quest. What they don't realize is that the video has been switched with an adult film, 
attracting the attention of their parents and ring wraith like sixth graders. What the hell is wrong with you guys? Get the tape! Perhaps what's most impressive about this episode is that it manages to satirize a three part epic in just 22 minutes, faithfully recreating several scenes and turning Butters into Gollum. No purchase of Butters. We will show you the way. Yes, this way it is. Season 7 All About Mormons. I'm really excited to live in this town and share all kinds of great experiences with you, my new friends. Oh, dude, what a little asshole. Yeah, screw that kid. Before Matt Stone and Trey Parker were a hit on Broadway with the Book of Mormon, they made this classic South Park episode. When a Mormon family moves to town, people are completely bewildered by how unusually nice they are. Well, it's great you could join us for family home evening, Stan. What's that? That's when we don't allow any TV and just entertain each other with music and stories. Stan only becomes more judgmental as he learns the story of Joseph Smith, which he considers dum 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 dum. Aside from deriving humor from actual Mormon beliefs, the episode also provides a meaningful message about faith. Sure, religion doesn't always make sense, but if it helps you be a better person without hurting anyone else, who cares what other people think? All I ever did was try to be your friend, Stan. But you're so high and mighty you couldn't look past my religion and just be my friend back. You got a lot of growing up to do, buddy. Season 8, Awesomeo. Greetings, I am the Awesomeo 4000. Given all the hell Cartman has put Butters through, it's only appropriate that Eric gets his comeuppance in this hysterical episode. When Cartman dresses up as a robot to learn Butters' embarrassing secrets, he finds out that Butters actually knows one of his secrets. Oh, son of a bitch. Now, Cartman must fully commit to his role in order to avoid humiliation. Although we don't see Cartman's face for much of the episode, it's hilarious just to imagine what's running through his head as he digs himself deeper and deeper into trouble. Despite his best efforts, it's the tiniest of errors that ultimately exposes him. I think maybe one day we can all... Wait a minute, did, did that robot just fart? Hey, robots don't fart. Season 9 Trapped in the closet. But I'm being joined now by famous singer-songwriter R. Kelly. Well, I was just standing here, and Tom Cruise locked himself in the closet. Being a show that's not afraid to tackle any subject matter, it isn't shocking that South Park has riled up so much controversy. Trapped in the closet is arguably the most controversial episode of all. Taking on the Church of Scientology and poking fun at Tom Cruise, the episode naturally offended numerous parties. Dad! Tom Cruise won't come out of the closet. Despite this, it remains one of the show's boldest half hours, which over the years has come to be seen less of a shot at Scientology and more of an advocate for free speech. We are gonna sue you. What? Yeah, you think you can say our religion is a lie? We'll sue you, buddy. Season 10, make love, not Warcraft. Who is that guy? Whoever he is, he is one tough badass. South Park has produced a variety of video game related episodes and this is by far the most ingenious. When a griefer starts claiming innocent lives in the world of Warcraft, the boys decide to band together. As their characters level up into unstoppable warriors, in the real world they're reduced to slobs with no lives. How do you kill that which has no life? Much like an RPG, this episode manages to take something as uneventful as sitting at a computer screen and turn it into an absorbing adventure. The story both satirizes the WoW fanbase while also embracing the franchise. It's only made funnier by the fact that Blizzard Entertainment contributed to the CG animation. Oh, yeah, yeah, did it. Who did it, you guys? Season 11, The Imagination Land Trilogy. What is this place? This? is Imagination Land. It's where all the wonderful and goofy things that humans have made up over the years live together. Of all the multi-part episodes South Park has done, this Emmy-winning trilogy stands out as a magnum opus. Imagination Land is certainly one of the show's most ambitious and cinematic outings, as imagination itself is threatened. In addition to providing one great laugh after another, Imagination Land constantly leaves you at the edge of your seat. Not only wondering where the story will go, but also which imaginary character will make an appearance next. There's no time left. You have to get control of your imagination and bring Santa back now. They even make room for our favorite woodland critters. In the end, we get a unique moral regarding the importance of imagination and the impact many of these fictional characters have had on us. Season 12, Overlogging. 
By this time in the show's run, Randy had become a far more centric part of South Park's storylines. So when the internet seemingly disappears from town, Randy's inability to master his domain forces him to find the web elsewhere. Randy, where will you go? We're gonna head west. There's a rumor going around there might be some internet out there. So we're heading out California way. That alone was funny enough, but it's how things go once they get to an internet refugee camp that really dialed the laughter up. From the hilarious internet simulator to Randy's ectoplasm excuses, everything about his obsession brings gut-filled laughter. Plus, let's not forget Kyle saving the day by merely doing what many have done before with many of our electronic devices, unplugging something and plugging it back in. Season 13, The Ring. What's all this I'm hearing about not wearing the purity rings? <laughs> Season 13 may have had some great stories, like Butters becoming a pimp, but how it opened topped them all. This was all about South Park taking clear aim at Disney. It may start with mocking the Jonas Brothers and their sexually suggestive performances, but once Mickey Mouse enters the frame, the bigger picture of it all shines straight through. Depicted as a physically and emotionally abusive boss, the writers use Mickey as a means to mock the so-called family-friendly image the brand is known for. Do we have a problem? Huh? No, sir. No, Mr. Mouse. No, Mr. Mouse. Oh, that's good, because I thought we had a problem for a minute there, huh? They hold nothing back as Mickey becomes a fire-breathing beast who destroys everything in his path. Like so many others on this list, it combines the best parts of comedy and social commentary. Season 14, 200, 201. Shockingly, I've just been slandered once again in the town of South Park. In these landmark episodes that mark the show's 200th and 201st episodes respectively, South Park pays homage to its best moments with the return of fan-favorite characters and practically every celebrity the show has ever parodied. They all tie into a clever, albeit controversial, story in which Tom Cruise, Rob Reiner, and other big names threaten to sue the town unless they deliver the taboo prophet Muhammad. After 200 resulted in a threat from a radical Muslim group, Comedy Central heavily censored the follow-up, 201. Nevertheless, both episodes still effectively enforce the message that no public figure should be off-limits when it comes to satire. If there's anything we've all learned, it's that terrorizing people works. Plus, we finally learn who Cartman's real father is. So there's that. No, no. The only Bronco who lived in South Park. Season 15. You're getting old. You go listen to it and tell me you don't think it sounds like crap. I'd love to. I'm not an old fuddy-duddy, Sharon. I'm still cool. Writers of any kind will often include aspects of their own life in the material they are creating. Perhaps more so than any other episode at the time, this mid-season 14 finale echoed the real-life difficulties of the show's creators, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Stan's frustration with getting older and life-changing was merely a reflection of the pair's own struggles with getting older as well. Dude, you... you've changed. I haven't changed. The world has. Don't you see it? No. No matter how hard any of us try, you can't fight the clock. Although much of the weight of this episode was undone by the follow-up, it doesn't change how much this made all of us think about our own views on how life inevitably changes. Season 16. A Nightmare on FaceTime. We are going into business for ourselves. You are all looking at the new owner of Blockbuster Video. Blockbuster Video. Even back in 2012, renting your movies from a local Blockbuster store was still considered antiquated. So only the likes of Randy Marsh would think buying a video rental store would be a good idea. Nonetheless, he does. And when it fails to drum up much in the way of business, Randy goes a little crazy. What makes this episode stand out among the rest of the season is how it turns Randy into an animated version of Jack Torrance from The Shining. From the crazy eyes to being frozen out front, it's a comical take on such a scary and iconic character. You want to just sit here a little more and be frozen? Yeah. You want me to bring you some McDonald's? Okay. Season 17, The Black Friday Trilogy. But soon we will be fighting the greatest battle of our young hot lives. Winter is coming. And the next-gen gaming devices are hitting the shelves. You think Game of Thrones is brutal? You should see the mall on Black Friday. 
This three-part epic that consists of the episodes Black Friday, A Song of Ass and Fire, and Titties and Dragons takes a long, hard look at the dark side of consumerism as the boys devise a plan to achieve discounts on next-gen consoles. The question is whether they should buy Xbox Ones or PS4s. Everyone who wants to get PS4s join with us. No, we can't divide like this. Stan, you're on our side, right? I like the PS4's controller better. What, no love for Nintendo Wii U? While Sony and Microsoft go to war, Randy prepares for winter. George R. R. Martin procrastinates, and Princess Kenny reigns supreme. Firing on all cylinders, the Black Friday trilogy dishes out ingenious references, commentary, twists, and even a tie-in to the Stick of Truth video game. Like this! We can just play with this! Season 18, Grounded Vindaloop. No matter how you look at it, this episode tops Season 18 for one very good reason, the very last scene. Come on, who didn't laugh themselves off their seat to find the kids in the real world mocking the show's blocky animation? It's pretty cool, but the graphics suck. The episode also had the added bonus of watching Butters let loose a little while thinking he's in the VR world. He may have gotten grounded yet again, but at least he had a moment of payback for his dad. This is for all the times I got grounded! Oh! Oh! Season 19, Tweak and Craig. Tweak, don't make me out to be the bad guy here. No, you're not the bad guy. You're never the bad guy, are you? You, you just step on people and you use them. You're going too far, dude. This is, like, totally not necessary. I'm going too far? What is wrong with you? This time around, the show brings the Japanese art form of yaoi into the mix by depicting Tweak and Craig as a couple. The confusion around the art inevitably causes the townsfolk to think the two boys are actually together. This results in both Tweak and Craig both adamantly insisting that they are straight, but ultimately end up portraying themselves as a couple to appease both the townsfolk and themselves. It is confusing as to whether these two are really a couple, but that isn't what makes the episode great, as we're given multiple moments where everyone reassesses what it means to be happy. Season 20 – Oh Geez It was 2016, and much like the rest of the country, the residents of South Park are in shock as Garrison has become president. The world is in a bit of a shock. Uh is this, we're sure this is for real, right? And as unlikely as that was, most of this episode builds on the season-long arc about Gerald Broflovsky's obsession with being an internet troll. Danish company Troll Trace has been hard at work combating the likes of Gerald and his cronies. Thanks to a deal with Hillary Clinton, all trolls are captured and turned over to Troll Trace in exchange for keeping people's web history a secret. Hey, Skank Hunt. What the hell is going on? Without the setups from an episode like this, the rest of the season would not have come out as well as it did. Season 21 – Franchise Prequel The Coon and Friends gang are hard at work trying to figure out the plans for their movie and TV franchises. But it all goes sideways thanks to the proliferation of fake news. When the town invites Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg to address the issue, they get one of the weirdest people the town has ever seen. Zuckerberg seemingly ignores anyone's request to talk, speaking in a weird voice and making bizarre noises. <laughs> it's this depiction that takes the humor of this episode and dials it up. No one could have thought Facebook's CEO could be so funny, but in the town of South Park, anything is possible. Ha! Ow! I have never witnessed this style before. Season 22 The Problem with a Poo. Hanky, we need to talk about what you tweeted. This one has it all. The Roseanne Barr tweeting controversy, discussions around racism in television, and even a hearing that eerily mirrors the one undergone by Brett Kavanaugh. It all centers around a longtime fixture in South Park, Mr. Hanky. Even the title of the episode is a play on words of the documentary about the Simpsons character, Apu. Okay, okay, look, I know it wasn't a good joke, but it really wasn't my fault. The fact is, I went home last night, and I was angry. I couldn't sleep, so I took some Ambien, and then I started tweeting. The episode makes it crystal clear that as inclusivity becomes the norm, there's a dangerous line to ride between the acceptance of change and clinging to the past. Through the eyes of the town, 
we can see the real struggle of the past versus the present, and it makes for a great standout episode. Season 23 – Shots Let's just get this out of the way. Eric is a pig. No, we're not calling him names or trying to be derogatory towards him. Truth is, the episode's plot primarily focuses on Cartman needing his vaccination shot. Every time they try to give him the needle, he ends up running around on all fours, squealing like a little pig. He lost it during his visit at the doctor's office and even at an old-fashioned rodeo. No matter how hard you try, this one's hilarious for just how well they've taken anthropomorphism and reversed it into zoomorphism. There he goes, folks. Dear Lord, he's a slippery one. Season 24, South Park. Post-COVID, the return of COVID. While Season 24 technically only had two actual episodes, both of which were TV specials, they are both listed as having production codes from that season. This two-part special concluded with the future boys of South Park finding a way to travel back in time to undo the COVID-19 pandemic. But instead of preventing it, they choose to forgive each other for how they behaved during the outbreak. You guys, I know what to do. With Kelly Clarkson's I Forgive You playing in the background, the episode reminds us of all the hard times and struggles we went through during the pandemic. Leave it to a handful of kids to teach the rest of us a great lesson in forgiveness and cutting each other some slack. The pandemic's been awful. We all need to just cut each other some slack. I love you, buddy. Season 25. Help. My teenager hates me. Airsoft guns have hit the town and the four boys are eager to try them out. Only one problem. The boys are forced to play with teenagers. Now having a teenager assigned to each kid, they become replacement parents taking on all the typical tasks parents have to deal with. It's hysterical watching these 10-year-olds try to teach teens things like personal hygiene or how to cook ramen noodles. I'm sorry I'm not a five-star chef! Hey, hey, man, it's cool. Let me, uh, let me slow it down for you. Inevitably, the teens rebel against their new parents, and the real dads and Uncle Jimbo join our boys in a battle against the teens. Did somebody say something about airsoft against teenagers? It's both funny and heartwarming seeing the kids finally getting real bonding time with some adults. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Season 26 – Deep Learning AI services such as ChatGPT have taken the world by storm, so it came to no one's surprise when they featured in this Season 26 episode. This is a real app? It'll completely change your life, bro. Much to our delight, we find several of the boys using the software for their own purposes, which include completing homework and texting girls. Even Garrison joins in on the action to grade his students' papers. Naturally, it all hilariously backfires. Fortunately, Stan is able to save the day, but not without some obvious help. It's entertaining and social commentary we are so accustomed to seeing from the show at its finest. Dude, how did you pull all that off? Chat GPT, dude. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.